Ladies and gentlemen, get ready to listen to some mumbly jumbly. All the way from St. Albans, your host for tonight, Abs the Magic, Super Coach Godfather. Hello, everybody. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for joining. Now, today we're going to talk about a few practice games, and we have the same cameraman issue again. We're going to talk about him as well. We're going to call him Mr. Cam. Okay, that's his name today, Mr. Cam. Are you watching, Mr. Cam? We're going to talk about you. Just calm it down. Anyway, before we do, we have a few announcements to make. Okay, the first one, or well, we have two of them. All right, let me go over here. We have... This is thank you to you guys, Dr. Supercoach has cracked 1k subscribers <laughs> that's awesome now now for all their hard work they've done over the years they'll finally get paid that's awesome then jock reynolds has cracked the 1k subscribers and for all the hard work that they did they'll also get paid which is awesome now uh secondly this video here is going to get deleted so you got one day to watch it okay um because we're going to delete this video you probably, most of you have watched it, and you should have memorized it by now, because this is the Mission Impossible one, it self-destructs, and we're gonna, this one is gonna self-destruct tomorrow, it's gone, but part two's coming out, so stay tuned, I'll tell you where to watch it, you'll see where to watch it, part two of this, and it's gonna be pretty good, I'm gonna show you how to cheat, now, actually, it might not be tomorrow, it might be Sunday, alright, so it's either tomorrow or Sunday, I'm not sure which day, uh, so just to calm it down for now, now, on other news, we have the 1,000th subscriber for Jock Reynolds. We, we, we found out who he was. It was a young man by the name of Simon Lewis. He was the 1,000th sub. So we'd like to congratulate Simon. We'd like to say thank you very much. You are a star. Simon, you are a legend. And um, thank you very much. So just come down now, okay? Just come down. Okay, anyway, let's continue. Let's get on with some practice games. Okay, we're going to start first with the Richmond, the Mighty Tigers in the North Melbourne game. Now, this game, uh, we'll start for Richmond first, and Toronto, oh, oh my God, he looked good. Now, I think they changed his boots. This is not the same Toronto that we saw at GWS. This, this Toronto knew how to kick the ball. He was kicking the ball better uh, than anyone that I've seen. His passes were pinpoint. His, uh, he was tackling. He was kicked two goals, uh Two, two, uh, two behinds, which both behinds hit the post. Could have had four goals. Uh, it was only a practice game, doesn't matter. But he looked so good. Um, so, Taranto, if you don't have him in your team, I think you're going to be in trouble. Uh, I think I think he is the must-have. Now, Hopper, uh, he was all class. Uh, some of he just he has more time than anyone on that on that field today. He was just he was he was working in slow motion. He was so good. Uh, I love watching him play. Like, Richmond are going to benefit so much from both these players, Toronto and Hopper. Uh, so, I loved Hopper's game. I loved Toronto. Oh, Hopper didn't get as much of the ball as what Toronto did. Well, it didn't look like he did anyway, but um, uh, Hopper was just all class. Now, Short, um, he's got the same role as last year, so it's no good. Uh, he's got the midfield forward role. So, um, if you were considering Short, um, yeah, he's a no good. Well, he's a good player, but not super coach relevant, I don't think. Now, Dusty also not super coach relevant. Played mainly forward. It looked good when he had the ball. It looks very fit. He was doing those fend-offs again. He was back. Dusty is back. Just come down, everyone. But uh, the role is not there because Taranto and Hopper now have just taken that midfield role. So Dusty is going to be more forward. And it's gonna, <laughs> the opposition are going to be crying. Now, let's go to North Melbourne. All right, and uh, we're going to talk about Clarko's Cluster, because I didn't see it. I didn't see no Clarko's Cluster today. It was something different. It wasn't um, what they said it was going to be when they reported it three weeks ago or two weeks ago in the papers. They said they're going to switch the ball left, then right, then back, and going to go over the place and then attack forward. But no, their game plan was straight down the guts. It was really good. Um, I love the way they play. I love the way they set up there. Actually, of all the teams that i watched so far, North Melbourne impressed me the most of all the games that I've watched. Uh, North Melbourne's game plan uh, impressed me more than any other team so far. 
So Clarko is a genius. So he, he may he may lift his team up. Clarko's cluster wasn't there, but their game they, they went straight down the guts. They, they they went they took the game on, and the kids were trying their best. Now, LDU uh, had a few disposal uh, efficiency issues, but besides that, he looked good. He's the same LDU that we saw last year, if not better. So um, he looked very good. Uh, I like his game. Phillips, he looked good. He can put him on the field. Uh, he, he looks really good. Uh, yeah, I like Phillips' game. Now, Zerha had a good game, okay? Uh, and looks like he's going to play a bit of midfield. But you got to keep in mind that um, Simkin and Cunnington were missing. Plus, I've seen uh, Matt Forrest. Um, he, he's doing all the stats. So if you're on Twitter, you got to follow this guy, Matt Forrest. Oh, my God. He, he, he's, he's a legend. He, he's giving us all the stats for all the games. Uh, we don't have any stats. I need to get them from Matt Forrest. Now, look at the CBAs. Davies Uniac, 81%, uh, similar to what he had last year. So it looks like Davies Uniac is the main man. Phillips, 66%. Zerha, 66%. And Powell, 59%. But you're missing those two players, Simkin and Cunnington. But um, these are, it looks like Uniac has got that role still. Phillips may have that role. And Zerha could possibly uh, switch with Cunnington. And Powell could probably switch with Simkin. I don't know how they're going to do it, all right? So uh, maybe Simkin stays there longer. Maybe Powell and Phillips switch. I don't know how they're going to do it. But uh, their midfield, they've got a lot, of, a lot of speed in that midfield. I'm actually very impressed with them. Now, for Richmond in the midfield, Taranto spent 70% CBAs, Hopper 70%, and Short 70%. So Short had a lot of midfield time. And Prestia only 55%, but Prestia uh, got replaced after three-quarter time. So I only played three quarters. Okay, now when I went to... Let's get over here. When I went to um, the kick-ins, Zebel had five. He had five and played on five times. Of course, Zebel always played... Zebel goes for maximum points all the time. Um... Now, McDonald also had the kick-ins, played four out of four. And for Richmond, it was Rioli and Vlaston and maybe and Ralph Smith, a few few uh, touches. So going back on, on Powell, he impressed me as well. Just that his price is a little bit awkward. So I'm not sure if, if he's super coach relevant. I mean, he could be. It's not, it's not awkward, awkward, but it is awkward. More fantasy-related, I would say. Powell could be a good fantasy player. Now, now Zebel's game. Let me explain to you because I watched him really close. I was, I was, I was virtually watching this game just watching Zebel because <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm the recruiting manager. Remember, just coming down. I'm, my job was there to look at Zebel. Now, what he was doing, uh, his role looked actually really good. All right, um, he was off the back of the square on the center, on, in, in the center bounces, and he was running into the middle of the ground. So if uh, if the ball went uh, Richmond's way, he would be the first one to intercept it, and then. Pass it on to one of his own players. So he had he was he was, he was given that run from that centre half back. He was playing mainly centre half back, and um, and I really liked his role. He, the only problem was he didn't get much of the ball. Okay, so he's not going to be the same Zebel that we had two years ago from the looks of it. They're not going to keep p- playing kick to kick. So because they're going straight down the guts now, uh, they're going fast. So he's probably going to be a nineties type of player, all right? That's going to be his his score, and I mean, he's going to get 20 points just from kick-ins, and he's going to get 70 points from field play. So you're looking at about the 90s. That's still okay. And um, for his price that we're paying him, plus he's a forward, it's very hard to find forwards that are going to be scoring, especially in that um, F5 spot. So if we can get 90 out of him, we're actually happy. So he's not, I, I don't think he's going to be a keeper uh, from what I saw, but, but, but we'll, give him, we'll give him a trial. We're going to put him on field and see how he goes. But... At the moment, doesn't look like a keeper. Looks like a stepping stone. Okay, but uh, he looked good. And uh, who impressed me a lot was Sherry. Uh, he looked. He was taking marks, and he, was, he looked really good. But obviously, Goldie wasn't wasn't there when when I was watching Sherry. So um, uh, Goldie may affect Sherry's output. So we don't know. But Sherry did look good. And uh, and Sheezel is another player that that impressed me. However, he played a lot of forward. Okay, and. Um, and at 200k, uh, it, it, I mean, the kid's going to be a star, but his role for super coach at 200k deep in the forward line for a first year player, it's going to be hard to justify that price. Okay, so um, I'm, I'm probably going to pass on Sheezel for, for myself. Okay, and uh, and Goda uh, did a couple of nice things. Things he, did, he looked good. Again, 190k, very expensive. So um, it depends how how North Melbourne structure if he. 
if he's in their first team as well is another question. They had a few good players there. Uh, Hall wasn't playing. Hall was in the VFL, so that didn't make any sense. So maybe go to the head of Hall. I don't know. So that's something to look look forward to. But yeah, that this is my summary for the Richmond North Melbourne game. I actually quite enjoyed this game. I uh, just couldn't see the Kalakos cluster. It looks like there, there is no Kalakos cluster. <laughs> it's make believe, I think. Anyway, next game. Now, before we get on to the next game, we had some breaking news as well, which we, we posted this on Twitter because it was big news. Okay, well, I had to mention this. I forgot to mention it. Just come at the end. Now, uh, there was a group of fishermen. I actually hired these boys, all right? They're, they're not normal fishermen. I actually hired these guys to go out for me because um, I saw the game that Team Mitch played, and I knew I threw those keys in, that, in, the, in the middle of the ocean, and we had to catch the shark that did this. So I know the shark swallowed it. I heard on the on the shark news. It was on, it was broadcast live on the shark news that they caught the, that the, one of the sharks got the team itch keys. So um, I sent these four fishermen, these brave boys out to catch this shark, and they caught him. We got those keys back. So now, uh, with my review, with my analysis, I said he was a lock. Now team itch. It's go off the heart, okay? I've changed it to go off the heart. We've got the keys back. Just come down, everyone. The keys are back, okay? So we can move on. Anyway, let's continue. Now, we go to the Sydney versus Brisbane game, okay? You remember the cameraman that we were talking about, Mr. Cam? <laughs> now, Mr. Cam decided to go and, and broadcast this game as well. But there's a small problem, okay? Now, yesterday... It's, it's my fault. I, I take a, I take a responsibility for this one, okay? Because yesterday I said to um, Fox Fox Sports to go and buy a to buy and buy a, a tripod from Kmart. Well, it looks like they they listened. They went and bought a tripod from Kmart. I can't believe they listened to me. Just calm it down. You don't buy tripods from Kmart. Now, let me tell you something now. Fox Sports, when you do video graphing. Okay, when you when you zoom into a player, okay, the idea is once you're zoomed in, you gently follow that player. Gentle, you just calm it down. You be there, gentle, you stroke at the camera, very gentle. Okay, very slowly. You don't just zoom it up and down like a yo-yo. You, you, you. I went to Luna Park yesterday. I was on a roller coaster. I felt like I was on one of these roller coasters. But today, I felt like I was on a roller coaster for, for eight quarters. I'd go eight quarters on a roller coaster. You killed me today. This was really bad. Now, I can't give you lessons on how to operate a camera. This is a, this is a super coach channel. We don't do camera lessons. So just come down and get rid of this Mr. Cam. He's not good. Give me someone decent. Let's move on. Okay, now we go to this Swans and Lions game. All right, I need to go to the stats because I was so dizzy I couldn't watch it properly. I was recovering. I was on the floor. I had to go. I had to turn upside down just to see the TV. I didn't know which way to look at the TV. It was going in circles. Now Parker had seventy percent CBAs. Okay, which is expected. Now you'd think it would be Mills or Warner next. No, it was Goulden. Goulden had seventy percent CBAs. I can't understand this. What what is the horse doing? He's trying to con all you guys. The horse is playing super coach too. I know he is because he's going to trick you all. You're all going to go and get Goulden, and then you're going to, you're not going to get Mills or Warner. But the horse is going to get Mills and Warner in, in his team while you're getting Goulden, and then. In round one, when everyone's good, he's going to laugh at you, okay? He's just going to laugh at you. He's going to look at you and go, ha, 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 told you so. And then he's going to put Mills in his team and Gould's going to play forward. I know how, I know how the horse operates. I worked him out, okay? But um, Gilden has 70% CBAs. He, he looked good, okay? He looked composed, looked good. But I don't know if that's his role. I don't know what to think of it now. Uh, Robottom looked good as well. But 55% CBAs, I mean, last year he was going 90s. It might do the same this year. It might go 90s. might not be enough for that midfield spot. Uh, Warner, he looked good. 44% CBAs. What, what, how did, what did you, I mean, what, they, they said that Warner's going to the next level this year. They, what, next level of 44% CBAs? That's not next level. He's going downhill. If you're going to give him 44%, I can't work it out. Mills was playing a forward line. Playing in defence, I don't even know where. I don't even 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 think Mills knew where he was playing. The horses did 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 his tricks again. Now um, in our in the Lions team, okay, uh, we had Neil sixty six percent. Dunkley Dunkley looked good. Neil Neil is Neil. Okay, we don't have to talk to talk about Neil. We know what Neil can do. But Dunkley looked good. Uh, it looks like a lock in that um, in our forward lines. 
uh, McGluggage looked good, but uh, Ashcroft, he's going to be a star. He's going to win a brown. He's going to win two brown lows, maybe three browns back to back. He looks so good, and um, uh, very impressed. Now with with the Brisbane Lion defenders, uh, the two that we have on our bench, uh, Wilmot and McKenna. Now Wilmot is in forty five percent of teams. McKenna is in forty one percent of teams. Uh, Wilmot played on a wing, okay, so that's not bad. Um, I don't know if he's going to be a high scorer. He, he might be a, a 60s, maybe. Um, it's okay, it's not bad. You can put him on the bench uh, if you can find higher scoring defenders in our teams. McKenna, I don't even know if he's going to play. Um, so, it wasn't one of his best games. I've seen much better. And a 167k, um, so it's going to be interesting. Anyway... That's it for this game. That's all I took from this game. It was just one of those roller coaster camera work jobs again, and it made me dizzy. Let's go to the next game. Okay, we go to the Carlton and Collingwood game. Now, uh, with Carlton, uh, Cripps is Cripps, okay? He, he's not change. He's the same a player now, okay? Cripps is Cripps. Um, so, you can be confident when you get Cripps, uh, especially um, with their. Didn't have to ruck today, so it was good for him. He looked good. The Doc, uh, he, he looked okay. Uh, I'm not really going in confidence bringing in the Doc, to be honest. Um, he looked okay, but he didn't spend as much time in that middle. He was more in the back line and sort of in between middle and back line. So then again, Saad looked good okay as well. So if I had to choose between the two of these gentlemen, I'd probably go for Saad. Uh, because of the kicking value, although Doc takes the kickings as well, so it it's still the debate who would you pick, okay? But um, at the moment, I have Sard ahead because Doc didn't spend that much time in that midfield, and Doc's not cheap. Now, with with the um, two rookies, uh, Cowan and Chincota, okay? I think it's Chincota. Uh, I think one of these two is going to play, so let's see which one. Uh, Cowan looked composed, uh, did a couple of good things. Chincora looked good, uh, but you know they're, they're raw, they're young kids, and um, so these two I would have on the bench making cash. I wouldn't be comfortable fielding them on my team unless I see more action. I don't even know what they scored because we've got no scores, so we'll have to see them uh, next week. Maybe we'll have some super coach scores. We'll get a better idea of, of their scoring power. And points per minute, which is going to be important, all right? So um, we'll see what they're going to score next week. Not that you, that's your, going to be your guide, but it sort of gives you something to look at because at the moment we have nothing. So, yeah, so hopefully one of these two will be our rookie, so we have a spare spot for them on our bench. With Collingwood, uh, we saw Dacos. Now, I think someone mentioned on Twitter he had like 25 touches. Uh, that's not bad. That's That's really good. Uh, we saw, uh, and he played 50% midfield time, so he had a lot of time in that midfield. Uh, and that, that's pretty much what we wanted to see. We want to see his role. And that, is he going to have a midfield role, a defensive role? Well, it looks like we found out. It's going to be 50-50, but more midfield base. So uh, it could be good. <laughs> We're going to keep watching him next week. Uh, Darcy Cameron um, was competing for the ruck with Cox. It was a bit of a split, uh, not much difference. Uh, that's worrying signs for Darcy Cameron because Cox look actually look good. So this is going to be interesting what they're going to do. Uh, is he going to spend more time forward this year? So I had Darcy Cameron last year. I had nightmares. So the same thing might happen. So I'm passing on Cameron for sure. Now, T. Mitch, now you saw the breaking news earlier. The keys got found. So now he's you can let him loose. <laughs> uh I, I don't know. Um, I mean, he didn't spend much time. He maybe just warming up. It's only a practice game. Didn't have to go in too hard. But I'm just taking precaution. Um, Colin was playing a fast game. I don't know how Timmy is going to fit into this team. I'm just going to be safe. I'm not going to. I'm not going to pick him. I'd rather be safe than sorry. Now we go back to Twitter. Matt Forrest again, doing a great job. He says, uh, well, Cripps 84%, Hewitt 70%, Kennedy 60%, okay. So we had, and, and Dockery didn't spend as much time, uh, but we don't know. Uh, we don't trust these coaches because look at this. Collingwood has Degoia 64%, uh, 
uh, pre-season they were saying the go is not even going to play in the midfield. But what did he do? They have 64% time in the midfield. It makes no sense. They got 52%. Crispin Adams, a uh, bit of team each, Lipinski, but that's pretty much the percentage of time they spent in the middle. Now with um, with kick-ins, Saad had three, three out of four he played on. Newman had two, and that's it. And for Collingwood, it was Howen and just sharing the rest. Dacos only had one, I, I believe. One, 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 he played one from two, so he had two of them. Anyway, that's all for today. Thank you for joining, and remember one thing. It's nice to be important, but it's important to be nice. Ciao for now.